I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. Big Dave, how you doing, bud? Doing good. I'm doing good. I'm catching up with all my emails. I saw that. So, you want to you want to kind of let them know that it's coming because we're getting emails. All of you who have emailed me saying, "Where is my email for the community?" It's it is coming. coming. I, I promise. promise. Like I said, if you have checked your spam and it's not in there, you haven't received it just yet. We're rolling it out slowly. Um, and periodically, so it doesn't overwhelm the community and the server. So the experience for everybody who's in there is very smooth. But at the same time, it's allowing everybody to get set up. Because if there are any issues, we could take care of them individually versus having five, 6,000 emails saying, perfect. I'm having issues. So Perfect. <laughs> so, and that's perfect for our topic. Because our topic this week is stepping out of stress. And today's Connection Thursday, we're going to have a discussion on the consciousness of stress. Won't be deep at all, Dave. Enjoy it. So, consciousness is defined as the state of being awake and aware of one's surroundings. When it comes to the consciousness of stress, it can go one of two ways. Stress can cause total unconsciousness of our surroundings and total reaction of our actions or stress can cause disruption and make us aware that something inside us is activated, allowing us to pause, plan, and totally respond to the situation. In both instances, stress is a perception you are having from an event. The event is outside and the perception is inside and the perception is a belief or a program that has been activated in the subconscious mind. So let's look a little closer what it looks like when these programs get activated, how this process works. So one, something happens to cause stress. This could be something in your environment or it can be our own thoughts of worry and anxiety, right? It doesn't have to be outside us. It could be inside us too. Two, the program activates. This creates emotions and feelings. These feelings are usually felt in the heart region. These activations are coming from the force energies of the level one energies, the red zone energies. And when it comes to stress, it is usually the anchor of the fear energy that starts it. Mm -hmm. So take a closer look at these energies, David, the fear energies. The fear energies are anxious, shy, nervous, embarrassed, cowardness, doubt, worry, trapped, irrational. They're panicked, terrified, tense, timid, skeptical, paralyzed, hesitant, and avoidance. All of these energies cause stress on some type of level. It could be like a big level or a little level. It doesn't matter. It's the same energy. So number three, These feelings cause physical uneasiness. And depending on the power of the stress program activated or the the strength of the fear energy that is activated, that's the dependence on how you will feel physically. And it creates this physical uneasiness and this creates an assault of thoughts storming into the mind. Now these thoughts are designed for a purpose. Their purpose is to cause us to take action, to act. And then number four, here's the crossroads when it comes to stress. Your action will be determined by who controls the thoughts. If the ego grabs the thoughts, you will be reactive. The ego will turn the energy into a story. This story maybe will be on the the, something that may have happened in the past, or it could be on something that happens towards the future. Both stories will have some type of tether to pain. So in the past, it was a painful event. In the future, 
it might be a painful event. And this story is what starts to create the entire stress process. And if you're developed and you've developed some awareness, which means you can then separate yourself from that raging voice in your head, then you're able to pause plan. The pause plan creates a break in the stream of energy. Remember, this energy stream is trying to get you to act. And this break allows you to use the let go technique. And as you go through the technique, the let go technique, you begin to take control of the conscious mind. If you don't do anything, the ego takes control of the conscious mind. When you take control of the conscious mind, this allows you to respond to the situation. If a response is warranted, you respond. Or if a response is not warranted, you let go. And this will cause the program to actually burn out. This is stepping out of stress. Without the ego creating stories, there is nothing to feed the program. Correct? Anything you want to add? No, that was a pretty good explanation. <laughs> kind of on a roll <laughs> lately. Simple, yeah. Yes. So let's let's look a little deeper. Stress cannot happen without the ego and its stories. Stress cannot happen in the present moment, in the now. Only time we can be stressed out. Our consciousness has to be focused in the past or the future. When using this form of stepping out of stress, you are using, we've talked about this in past shows, you are using equanimity as a tool. Equanimity is the state of being calm, even though there might be chaos in your environment. So when you use equanimity as a tool, this is actually the first process towards stress mastery. See, you see the stress, separate yourself, let go, and this burns out the program. And this process, and it's a practice, as you do these practices over and over, eventually the program that caused stress will release. Then the perception changes within you. The thing that used to activate you into stress is no longer activated. So guess what? No stress. Mm-hmm. So. Now, as the letting go and the use of equanimity as a tool progresses, eventually you will have a shift in consciousness. You now go through life with equanimity as your state. This is truly stepping out of stress. So let's take a look at these three stages of consciousness that can lead us to this particular state. So there are three stages in the development of human consciousness. The first first stage is subconscious knowledge. This is a state that is driven by instinct and emotions. And this state stems from the tribalization process and our need to survive within the tribe. Now the second stage is conscious knowledge. This stage is built around the quest for information and to build our intellect. This stage is about gaining success and status within society and culture within our tribe that we were born into. Now the third stage is called the superconscious knowledge stage. This is the stage where we connect to the heart and we discover our true purpose and begin to live our day-to-day life connected. In the superconscious state, we live surrendered. So if you look at the energies of the growth energies, you will notice that when you hit the 350, 400 energy, this is the surrendered energy of stress mastery. This is when you are surrendering to what is and you're embracing what is. And so when we live in that energy, we let go of the wants. There's no need to control. This stage is characterized by a conscious unknowing. In other words, you're actually trying to undo everything you've done. We let go of the belief systems of the head. And when this is accomplished, this is complete stress mastery. Now, 
understand when we live in the head, the ego is in charge. It's and what does the ego? The ego is always seeking safety. It's always like it always thinks everything's out to get it. But you realize that the ego may seek safety, but it can never find it. And the reason the ego cannot find safety is because it creates the fear. So the ego has you seeking to be safe, not to change, right? To be okay, not to get hurt, not to have pain. But it's the ego that creates the fear that's causing this, yeah. right? So it's like the, well, I remember Eckhart Tolle telling a story. It's like you're looking for the arsonist when the, the arsonist is the, the chief of the fire department, <laughs> right? It, it doesn't work. And so the ego keeps us in the head. So we are unconscious and stuck in fear, drama, and stress. Now, to step out of fear, and that's what we've been talking about all week, we must face fear. When you face fear, you begin to create a split of the eyes. The eye of identification is the eye that locks us into the ego self-image identity. When you face fear, you simply pause, plan, you actually split the eyes. You, the eye of presence, can clearly see the stories of the ego, the eye of identification. This is the process of moving from stage two conscious knowledge to stage three super conscious knowledge. Your super conscious knowledge is held in the heart. The only way you can move into that is to connect to the heart. In stage two, you live in stress. And so we talked about it yesterday, Dave. Happiness in stage two is tethered to circumstances and peace is really never known. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're sad, depending on what's happening. But that's not peace. Stage three is about undoing everything from stages one and two. Well, I guess not everything. Let me explain. The two self-images, let me explain this again. We talked about it this week. I think it was Monday. You have the lower ego self-image. Everything in your life has been driven by your self-image. And that ego self-image is the first identity you were programmed with. But as you went through school and created some successes, that means that you kind of de deviated from the lower ego self-image and created some success. Might have been in school, it might have been in sports, right? You might have been definitely sports. Well, you might have been programmed <laughs> that you were kind of um, awkward, and then all of a sudden you become this good athlete. You're going against the lower programming, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when you do that, that actually creates a higher you self image. It's a, a knowing. I know I'm a good athlete, right? You don't believe it, you know it. Well, that's the the higher self image that we talked about on Monday, and this happens when someone breaks from the tribe and creates success. Now, this is very important. If that success that was created is tethered to the wants, the wants of approval, belonging, security, or control, then that success is no longer connected to the higher self-image. It's connected to the lower ego self-image because the ego is bonded through the desire, energy, and the wants. You understand? Did that make sense? Yeah. Does that make sense? So when we move, and all of us want to move into stage three, we surrender the wants. This releases the ego, and this connects us to the heart. In this state, it's you that controls the conscious mind. In this state, there is no stress. If there is any ego left, the ego has lost control. In other words, the ego can try to stream you, but you have such self-awareness and you're so connected to the heart and the superconscious that the ego has lost control. It can no longer take over the conscious mind, which means it can't take over your actions, right? Yeah. So that's what happens. Now, this is very important also. Does this mean once you reach stage three, the superconscious knowledge that you never get angry or fearful or experience grief? No. I always use Jesus' life as an example for this. Jesus' story shows him getting angry. It shows him being in fear and it shows him in grief. But nowhere did Jesus ever create a story around these energies. 
right? He didn't keep talking about him, preaching on him, bragging on him. He never created stories. He was in the energy, but he was in the moment. And he responded to the situation. He didn't react to the situation. And yes, Jesus was not always happy, but he was always in peace. And to me, his life story is the best example of what we're talking about. Because you can experience, you can grow. We all can live like Jesus. And we all did live this way at one time. Did you know he used to be like Jesus? No. You were about Maybe three. Maybe with a beard. You were about <laughs> <laughs> You're such a clown. So think about this, Dave, and correct me if I'm wrong. When you were a child, I'm talking three, four years old, right? You could be angry one moment and act mad. And then the next moment, you're laughing and playing again. That's how it is. The reason Jesus and the child can accomplish this is there's no ego. So yes, you had that energy at one time. I don't know if you could turn bread into wine because you would have been in a lot of trouble, but you understand, right? That would have been a good party party (laughs) trick. (laughs) Okay. Maybe you didn't experience that, but normal (laughs) children experience it. I always think about like uh, when when we always mention like being Christ-like or, you know, anything like that to children because I can't remember ever a time being upset or like that it was so stressful as like a three or four year old now. But as I remember like middle school, high school, there's certain moments that you always remember. Yes, because you're not mm-hmm. done. That's why it's so interesting about our Gen S project. Our Gen S project is very exciting. We just laid out the curriculum for the beta group and we're working toward finishing that, right? I mean, what can we do with these children if we can start getting them to move their stages to the heart at a young age? You know, not having to suffer. Most people don't want to make this move towards stress mastery until they suffered enough that they're looking for some answers, right? What if you could make the move without suffering? I'm just, I don't know, right? It's going to, that's the great unknown of what we're going to try to accomplish here. So you got to understand something about the ego though. The ego's base is built in the desire energy. It is also protected. The ego is protected by the comfort zone cage and this, and it is driven by attachments to the past. So the ego's base is desire. It's protected by fear of the comfort zone cage and it's driven by attachments to your past. To release the ego is to step out of stress forever. This is the basis of the seven steps of stress mastery. The structure of your current life is tied to the self-image that you carry this moment. But you are not tied to the structure. You are light, peace, and joy. It's only the attachments to the mind, the ego, that causes us suffering. So stepping out of stress, if you have stress, that means you have stress within your structure. Stepping out of stress forever begins with self-love. When you begin to take care of you with commitment to your personal growth, to commitment to your health, love prospers, you begin to realize that happiness does not come from outside yourself or anyone else. If you are looking for love, for truth, for salvation outside yourself, you will be disappointed again and again. Only by honoring yourself will you find peace. When we follow the steps of stress mastery, we will end with step seven, finding the now. When you reach this step, you have shifted out of head into heart. You use the head like a fine-tuned computer, which is what the head is. We learn how to set higher goals. We learn how to manage focus. And when you do that, you're now using the head the way it should be used instead of the head using you. And no matter what is taking place in your outside environment, when you reach step seven, finding the now, it doesn't matter. It will not disturb your inner being. You develop empathy for others and love for yourself. It's here where you realize 
that you are the most important person on the planet. It's very important that you make this realization. When you become the most important person in your life, you take care of you. And this raises your energy. When you step into the super conscious stage, because you've taken care of you, it raises your energy and this has a positive effect on everyone and everything that's involved in your life. Stepping out of stress is about stress mastery. Anyone can do it. The new stress mastery community that David has built is a guide to help you toward these stages of consciousness and to get you into that super conscious stage. In that community, you're going to learn the seven steps. You're going to learn diet, exercise, how to name your ego, how to let go technique works, green focus power hour, meditation, and how to find the now. Now, you're also going to learn how to connect to your heart and how to use the head. These are very important for you because once you find your purpose and you connect to the heart and once you understand the desire guilt pendulum of the head, you can set higher goals and you use the computer of the head so you get clarity, plan, set the goals, and then you learn how to use the steps of intention to release them to the heart. And that creates integrity of the hand. But this is learning how to live within a system. You'll learn a system of managing focus at work, a lifestyle system for diet and exercise, a system that you need to start your day, and a system on how to close your day. And these systems are all designed to keep you in what we call that green zone. And they're all designed to help you step out of stress. David, anything? Pencils down. <laughs> oh, now you're getting serious. I see sitting up tall. I, I think for, for this, the big takeaway for me is, like you said, um, to understand what's happening as you're within that state. Uh, I think that's important because I've, I've told the client today, what is happening when you feel this? And is it happening? Be and when you look at that program, you start to separate the person, the event, the experience that you're having and realize that it's you. Yes. It's inside of you. Very good, so David. when you feel like if, let's say, you know, a, your sister upsets you, right? Mm -hmm. Then you notice that feeling. And you're like, my, it's, it's my sister's fault. It's my sister's fault. Then you go hang out with friends. And then your friend upsets you for the same thing. You get that feeling. Is it, your, is it your sister? Or is it your friend? Or is it you with a program that's causing you to feel a certain way towards people? And then when you look at it that way and you start to separate the program between the person, you start to notice, what is it? Why am I treating this like this? And you understand what type of trick or you know thing that the ego is trying to use to keep you locked in the ego uses stories and so you will when you do that and you create awareness that's a great exercise david you will start to notice that wait a minute this is the same feeling i had with my sister i'm having the same feeling but yeah. wait a minute it's not that mm -hmm. it's the programs people the pause plan when you learn about the pause plan response you have to understand that it only takes a second. It's not like you have to stop and 10 minutes later. No, if you can stop for just a moment and pull back and see your thoughts, right? And then you gotta ask the question, well, if I'm watching my thought, who's watching the thoughts? Exactly, you are watching the thoughts. What that does is, scientifically and physiologically, it shuts down the sympathetic nervous system. It shuts down the red zone. And this causes a switch to flip over to the green zone. And in that moment, you have the opportunity to step out of stress. Because you're not going to get rid of stress in the beginning. In fact, the clients that I'm working with right now <laughs> This is major disruption time because they're about at the eight week point and then we go into the shadow. And the disruption's happening because I am purposely activating their programs. Because 
at, the only way we can get rid of these programs is to be activated. So we got to stop looking at bad or good. If somebody disrupts you, they might be your greatest teacher. They might be a parent, a sibling, a spouse, and they might be the teacher that allows you to become free because you can't get rid of a program unless it's activated. Every stressful situation is an activated program. Every stressful situation is an activated program. And so you understand that you're not going to get rid of the stress deactivated program. What you're going to get rid of is the stories so you can step out of the stress. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I think you said it right there. It's the awareness from it. I think if you go through life with your eyes closed and you have good and bad situations and poor me, it's happening to me all the time versus why is this happening or why am I treating it this way? And then you have that awareness. It's no longer good or bad. It's just the way that you are perceiving that event. I see disruptions as, and I don't have a lot of them. There's some big stuff happening right now, right? <laughs> it didn't really disrupt me. I, I just acted. Okay, yeah. this is what we're doing. We're responding. Let's move in this direction. That's the direction that I'm kind of moving into, but I don't feel forced in it. I don't feel stress. But Barry acts up. Barry can act up. And it's more like now it's more like a bubble and I can just slap him down, right? In the beginning, oh my, you start to beat yourself up. The reason you got to set each day is to set yourself in a green zone. Now, very important. The reason you must close each day, this is what I like to use the focus mirror for, is because if you don't close the day, you never, you never transition into the next part of the day. Plus, you never shut off. And that's when you get caught in guilt. So when you're trying to work on stress, right? And all of a sudden you get reactive and you realize at the end of the day, man, I did not have a good day. I was reactive all day long. That is the point where you have to sit and journal. What was that? And make the intention that next time I am doing this and forgive yourself. Because if you don't learn how to close the day, you will be walking around in stress. I guarantee it. The only way to step out of stress is you've got to have a start and a finish of each day. And it's not when you go to bed. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, yeah it's your, your choice to yes. end the day. You have to. You're in charge then, right? Yeah. There, there's been times in the middle of the day where it's just like it's been such like a a crazy day and this this is kind of like a while ago where i'm like i'm go i'm gonna restart right now <laughs> and i stop and i'm like all right i feel like this all day why can't figure out why all right i just know i don't want to feel like this and i start over and i just go throughout it and i end the day at the end of the night with that new restart for me i'm telling you green focus management the system is all about managing your focus right and what it does is why does it keep you out of stress because you, you start and end all day long. Mm -hmm. It's not one long to-do list. It's not one long action. You start and end, start and end. So it works physiologically for the physical part and it works mentally for the brain function in the mind, right? Mm -hmm. But more than anything, you're managing your focus. That's the key to it all. That's it for today's show. Our mission is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.